live from my apartment. Under the Scope Reviews presents a Jack Johnson production. It's the best and worst of 2015 awards show, working title, with your host, me. Yes, 2015 was a pretty okay year in anime. There's only a handful of shows I would consider truly great and a huge swath of good enough. Still, there's a lot to talk about, so I'm not sure where to begin. But the first thing that, uh, comes to my mind is, uh, the first thing, uh, first. Anyways, like most years do, 2015 struck a balance between greatness and abominations so shameful just watching them is a disgrace to my family's name. Hell, some shows even managed both. You know, like Bikini Warriors. That's right folks, 40 seconds in and the only anime we mentioned is basically a hentai. Better stick around because there's plenty more where that came from. At this point, you're probably wondering how this is going to work. Well, I've got a whole bunch of awards to give out in a slew of different categories ranging anywhere from best opening to biggest disappointment, with each winner receiving the highly sought after Golden Saber. Some awards will have nominees, others will just go straight to the winner, but all of them are sure to spark some rage comment from an angry fanboy. The biggest prize is of course the coveted Anime of the Year award. I'll select the best anime from each season with those four shows moving on to the final round as nominees for Anime of the Year. So with a whopping 44 Golden Sabers to give out, let's jump right in, shall we? First, a clarification. There are only two requirements for a show to be considered for these awards. Number one, I had to have seen it. Naturally, if I didn't see it, how can I judge it? Partly due to the huge amount of series that aired this year, but mostly due to college, unfortunately I didn't have time to get to everything, so shows like Parasite, Gachamon Crowd's Insight, Working Season 3, and Noragami Aragato won't be included. Number two, it had to have aired in 2015. So yes, Fall 2014 Leftovers are eligible because they still aired this year even though they didn't start this year. With that in mind, let's kick things off with the best anime of the winter season. Not gonna lie, Winter had some pretty terrible shows. Winter probably had the weakest group of original series, with only one propping it up. And yet, it was still my favorite season of the entire year, thanks in large part to the best group of leftovers I think I've ever seen. Three of my favorite shows of the year came from this lot, and that's not even including the few I haven't watched. So on that note, the nominees for anime of the winter season are... Shirobako. Death Parade. Your Lie in April. Yona of the Dawn. It's a bit of a shame, really, because these are all some of my favorites of 2015, but the winner who will be moving on to the Anime of the Year award is... Shirobako. As much as I love the other three, this was an easy decision for me. Shirobako is a brilliantly well-done workplace slice of life that offers an introspective look into the anime industry, making it a must-watch if you call yourself a fan of anime, and a definite contender for Anime of the Year. A lot goes into making an anime, and Shirobako excellently highlights the incredible amount of work it takes. Yes, even to make a shit show. Of course, an important aspect of any series is the sound, bringing us to our first major category, music. What better way to start this off than with what starts a show off? A bad opening doesn't really take away from a show because I can just skip it. A good opening, on the other hand, definitely adds to it, getting me pumped for the episode to come, even if said episode is utter garbage. I'm not pointing any fingers, but some of these coming shows fit the bill. With that, here are the nominees for best opening. Raise your flag. Man with a Mission, Mobile Suit Gundam, Iron-Blooded Orphans. The Hero, Jam Project, One Punch Man. Flyers, Radio, Death Parade. Bravely You, Leah Charlotte. Brave Shine, Emma, Fate Stay Night, Unlimited Blade Works. Renegade. Stereo Die Foundation, Gangster. And the winner is... Yeah. 
Flyers is one of the most energetic, upbeat openings I've seen, making it the polar opposite of the show itself. In fact, they're so different, it's a perfect match. What better way to kick off a show about death than with the liveliest opening in existence? On the flip side, we have the ending. Usually ending sequences don't have nearly the same level of quality to them as openings, so it's rare that I watch an ED after every episode. For these four, however, I made an exception. The nominees for best ending are... Yakeo Chinai Tsubasa, Aoi Tada, Shark. Last Theater, Noisy Cell, Death Parade. I'm not gonna make it. Is it I now? Can't see Everyday World Ballad Version, Yui and Yukinan, Orega Iru, Zoku. One Light, Califina, Arslan Senki ending two. And the winner is... For a series that's supposed to be all about the feels, it's probably not a good thing that the ending sequence induced more emotion in me than anything the show did. The song is incredible, and while it's just a series of stills, each picture is breathtaking and would make for a great wallpaper if, you know, the show didn't suck. Openings and endings are great and all, but an oft forgotten category of music and anime is the insert song. Depending on the scene and the moment, a great insert song can sometimes be even more memorable. So, the nominees for best insert song are... Kimi no Moji, composed by Jun Mueda, Charlotte. Last Stardust, and man, Fate Stay Night on the Little Billboards. Kira Meki, Wachi, Your Lion April. On My Own, Ai Nina Mia. Kekai Sensei. Cruising. Maybe we have got to stop this cruising. Cause it only takes us no. And the winner is. It's no secret I'm a huge fan of Amei's work, and her two pieces for Unlimited Blade Works are fantastic. As much as I love Brave Shine, though, Last Stardust is beyond amazing. It helps that it plays during one of the show's best scenes, but it's fair to wonder if that's only the case because of Last Stardust. It's that good. The most important piece of music for any show is of course the soundtrack. A good OST serves as a nice complement to a scene, but a great OST can make the scene. In the category of Best Original Soundtrack, the nominees are Food Wars, Tatsuya Kato, Charlotte, Jun Maeda, Kekai Sensei, Taisei Iwasaki. Classroom Crisis, Yuki Hayashi. And the Golden Saber goes to... Kekai Sensei. This OST is truly a work of art, with any number of tracks I could point to and say, damn, that's great. It has a very Cowboy Bebop Bacchano vibe to it. High praise considering these are two of the best soundtracks of all time. It's so good, I almost can't choose just one. Almost. In the category of Best Single Track, here are the nominees. Attack the System, Tatsuya Kato, Kekai Sensei. <laughs> Moonlit Night, Yuki Hayashi, Death Parade. Akatsuki no Yona, Ryo Kunihiko, Yona of the Dawn.
Emiya, Hideyuki Fukasawa, Fates Day Night Unlimited Legends. And the winner is... Okay, I'll admit, I've been a fan of this track dating back to the Kenji Kawai version in Fates Day Night 2006, and even the original from the visual novel, but this is without a doubt the definitive version in my book. So much hype. UBW's eyegasmic visuals, and a certain someone's <clears throat> voluptuous features, dominated the conversation. But when it comes down to it, neither of these shows stand at the top of a pretty damn good season. UBW as a whole would be up there, but since this is the second season we're talking about, where most of my issues with it came in, it just misses out. Instead, here are the four nominees for Best Anime of the Spring Season. Ore Monogatari, or My Love Story. Sound Euphonium. Kekai Sensen. My Teen Romantic Comedy Snafu 2, or Ore Ga Iru Zoku. And in what may come as a bit of a surprise, the winner is... Sound Euphonium. Of all my reviews, HBK is the one I regret the most. I didn't give the show nearly enough credit for its fantastic character development and real emotional depth. I watched it again sometime after my review, and it's far more than just Moe, though it is that too. It's a fantastic character story with an incredibly well-presented, genuine relationship, making it the perfect setup for this next category. You know, I could waste your time spouting some nonsense about how important the characters are, but if you didn't already know that, you shouldn't be here. Go read a book or take a night class, man. Get yourself educated. Anyways, here are the nominees for Best Female Main Character. Yona, Yona of the Dawn. Aoi Miyamori, Shirobako. Ayame Kajo, Shimaneda. Yuigahama Yui, Oregairu Zoku, also known as Best Girl. And the winner is... Yona. This was honestly one of the easiest choices for me. Yona is one of the best developed characters I've seen in quite some time. Her change over the course of the entire series is gradual yet satisfying and a thrill to watch. Her character is what defines the series, pushing it to such great heights. Oh, and she's also a certified badass. On the opposite end of the gender spectrum, here are the nominees for best male main character. Takeo Goda. Ore Monogatari, Hikigaya Hachiman, Ore Gairu Zoku, Saitama, One Punch Man, Dekim, Death Parade. And the winner is... Dekim. Unlike the female group, this was a difficult decision, but the mystery and intrigue surrounding Dekim's character pushed him over the top. Saitama could definitely take him in a fist fight and on comedy night at the local poetry slam, but Dekim's depth makes him a wonderfully interesting character and my best from the past year. While we've broached the subject, the award for best non-human main character goes to Tarumaru from Gako Gurashi or School Live. I mean, just look at that face. <clears throat> Moving on. In the category of best side character, the nominees are Asuka Tanaka, Sound Euphonium, Ana Nishiki no Miya, Shimaneta, Moomin Rider, One Punch Man, Shizuka Sakaki, Shirobako. And the winner is... Ana Nishikinamiya. It's safe to say Shimonetta wouldn't be half as funny, lewd, or downright perverse if it weren't for Ana. Depending on your point of view, that can be seen as a good or bad thing, but from mine, it means she's the perfect addition to the cast that gives the show nearly all of its most memorable moments. The Golden Saber for Best Villain goes to Gilgamesh. There's a dirty fade joke buried in there somewhere, I just know it. Gilgamesh is a textbook example of a black and white villain done right. The antagonist doesn't have to be complex to be considered good. No, Gil is a cheeky bastard with an admittedly infectious personality, but his biggest character trait, his arrogance, is ultimately his fatal flaw, making for a believable, fitting end to his character arc. Not to mention he's OP as fuck, making for one badass bad guy. Speaking of UBW, the award for most hilariously quotable line that makes sense in context but people don't want to have to think too hard about it, also known as the People Die If They Are Killed award, goes to... Shiro, for giving us this gem. Classic. That's not all Unlimited Blade Works gave us, though. 2015 was a great year to be a wingman. First, there's Lancer. 
teaching us all what it really means to be a true bro. Then there's Hawk from Yona of the Dawn. If you listen closely, you might make out the faint screams of a bunch of fangirls. Or what about Sunakawa from Ore Monogatari, always putting his bro before himself? And who could forget about Genos, the world's greatest sidekick? These guys are all great, but the award for best wingman has to go to Gakuto from prison school. I mean, this guy defecated his pants in the middle of class to help his bro out, literally flushing any potential social life he had down the toilet. If that's not true bromanship, I don't know what is. The award for best relationship has to go to the Kumiko X Kosaka ship from Sound Euphonium. As much as I love Takeo and Yamato in Ore Monogatari, this goes much deeper. Kumiko and Kosaka's relationship might be the most genuine Yuri relationship I've ever seen. It's so much more than the typical fanservice bait you see all the time. This relationship is real, and for that, it earns my highest praise. Of course, not all characters were created equal, and where some shine in the originality department, others fail miserably. The award for most generic character goes to Belle Cranel. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? Or Don Machi? This is fitting coming from such a generic show. Belle is your typical OP, oblivious, whiny protagonist, attracting every girl in the universe with a giant dick magnet or something. There's absolutely nothing new to see here. Move along to the next major character in the show. The I'm Just Here for the Fan Service Award goes to Chestia. I mean, Brestia. Or, I mean, are her boobs being held up by a fucking string? Yeah. Yep, there are really only two things you need to know about Hestia. Those cute little pigtails. Wait, what did you think I meant? The final award for the category of characters goes to Shirobako for best cast. Shirobako has a huge ensemble cast with an endless list of personality types. With so many characters, it's truly impressive how much depth they give each one. You're sure to find someone you can relate to, and the ultimate payoff in the end is more than satisfactory. Beyond just a fun look inside the industry, Shirobako is also a phenomenal character story with a slew of memorable personalities and a prime example of character development done right. How do I describe Summer? It'll most likely be best remembered as the golden age of Echi and the season where just about every reviewer in existence took a collective shit on Charlotte. Myself included, of course. I'd have to say this was the weakest season of the year with a bunch of okay shows, but nothing great. Still, I have to choose something as anime of the season, so here are the nominees. Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist. School Live. Prison School. Roka no Yusha, Brave of the Six Flowers. And the winner of Best Anime of the Summer Season is... Prison School. Stating the obvious, Prison School is the quintessential not-for-everybody show. In a season with no real standouts, however, I went with the series that gave me the most enjoyment, and boy did Prison School ever do that. This type of comedy rarely makes me laugh, but the characters sold it for me. Prison School's definitely not in my top five of the year, but unlike the others from this season, it didn't have any glaring faults to weigh it down, and I enjoyed it enough to warrant the title of Summer's Best. Twenty fifteen had some of the most well animated series to date, whether it be in the way of stunning action sequences, beautiful backgrounds and art, or breathtaking character movement. Here are the nominees for Best Animation. Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, Ufotable. One Punch Man, Madhouse. Sound Euphonium, Kyoto Animation. Oregai Iru Zoku, Studio Feel. And the winner is... Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. Ask me again tomorrow and I might give you a different answer. For today though, I went with UBW due to its consistently unbelievable level of quality. I love the ultra-realistic style, and the character designs have never looked better. It always looks incredibly fluid, crisp, and detailed. Let's move on, though, before I overthink it and change my mind. Madhouse takes home the crown of Best Studio of the Year, and it really wasn't close. With One Punch Man, Death Parade, Ori Monogatari, and Overlord all to its name, Madhouse dominated this award with a top-to-bottom, fantastic lineup. Best Plot Twist goes to School Live for the ending of that first episode. I'm sure most of you would agree, but I'm not going to spoil anything, so let's move on. Biggest what the fuck moment has to go to Anna's Love Nectar cookies from Shimonetta. For those who haven't seen it, whatever you're thinking Love Nectar is, it's probably dirtier. Best fight goes to Saitama vs. Boros from One Punch Man due to the unreal levels of hype and the mind blowing animation that just might be the best I've ever seen for a TV series. Biggest collapse, unsurprisingly, goes to Charlotte after it had a very promising start with the right staff in place before proceeding to go up in a fiery explosion of time travel, failure, and poor pacing. Gangsta, however, takes home the title of Biggest Disappointment, as it seemed like the most promising show of the summer season at one point, before stumbling down the stretch, leaving us with a decidedly mediocre pile of meh and a bankrupt studio. Great job! 
However, none of that's as bad as the garbage that was Astro's War, winner of the Biggest Abomination Award. I sat through all 12 episodes of that shit just to see if it got any better. It didn't. Each season, I gave you the anime you should be watching, but naturally, there were oversights. This show should have never made the list in the first place. It wasn't good when I put it on, and it didn't get any better. Charlotte and Gangster shouldn't have made the summer list in hindsight, and Kekai Sensen should have made Springs in place of Don Machi, but including Don Machi was an error from the get-go, and for that, you have my sincerest apologies. For the anime that ended without an ending, this one is for you. Here are the nominees for the Most in Need of a Sequel Award. Roka Nayusha. One Punch Man. Orega Iru Zoku. Yona of the Dawn. And the winner is... Yona of the Dawn. Yona not only ended with a beginning, but it also ended when it was just getting phenomenal. Don't make me read the manga! You know I can't read! On our final stop through 2015, we've come to the fall season. One show in particular dominated the headlines, but beyond that, fall had a slew of really good series and a ton of sequels, most of which I couldn't watch. But unlike summer, there's more than enough to work with here. So with that, here are the nominees for Best Anime of the Fall Season. One Punch Man. Osamatsu-san, Perfect Insider, Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans, or G Tiketsu. And the winner is... One Punch Man. One Punch Man is a hilarious, thrilling action satire of the superhero genre. No, this isn't some perfect masterpiece. There just isn't enough substance here. However, that doesn't mean it's not a great show. More than worthy of the title of best anime of the fall season. Now we've gotten to the real meat of the awards. For the sake of variety, each show is only eligible for nomination in one genre. With that out of the way, here are the awards for Best in Genre. The nominees for Best Action are Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans, Kekai Sensen, One Punch Man. And the winner is... One Punch Man. In the category of Best Adventure Fantasy, the nominees are Akagami no Shira Yuki Hime, Arslan Senki, Gate, Yona of the Dawn. And the winner is Yona of the Dawn. For Best Mystery, the nominees are Beautiful Bones, Death Parade, Perfect Insider, and Rampo Kitan Game of Lapis. And the Golden Saber goes to... Death Parade. For Best Drama, the nominees are... Orega Iru Zoku. Plastic Memories. Sound Euphonium. Your Lion April. And the winner is... Your Lion April. In the category of Best Romance, the nominees are... Don Machi. Wait, what? Who wrote this crap? No, no, that's it, I quit. I'm not getting paid enough for this. <clears throat> the Disappearance of Nagato Yuki-chan. Ore Monogatari. Sai Kano, How to Raise a Boring Girlfriend. And the winner is... Ore Monogatari. In the category of Best Harem, the nominees are... Jitsu wa Watashi wa, Monster Musume, Nisekoi Season 2, Yamada-kun and the Seven Witches. And the winner is... Monster Musume. For Best Echi, the nominees are... Food Wars, Shokugeki no Soma, Prison School, Punchline, Shimaneta. And the winner is... Prison School. For Best Comedy, the nominees are Assassination Classroom, Gintama, Osamatsu-san, and Himoto Umaru-chan. And the Golden Saber goes to Osamatsu-san. In the category of Best Slice of Life, the nominees are Is the Order a Rabbit Season 2, Nanan Biori Repeat, School Live, Shirabako. And the winner is... Shirabako. Lastly, I consulted Twitter for this final category because I haven't seen any of them, and here's what they chose. For Best Sports Anime, 
The nominees are Baby Steps Season 2, Diamond No Ace Season 2, High Q Season 2, and Kuroko No Basket Season 3. And the winner is Kuroko No Basket. So here we are at the very end. We've given out quite a few awards, but the biggest prize is still on the line. You've been waiting the whole time to get to this point, so without further delay, here are the nominees for Anime of the Year. From the winter season, a fall 2014 leftover, Shirobako. From the spring, Kyo Annie's Sound Euphonium. From the summer, the etchy comedy Prison School. And lastly, from the fall, the mega hit One Punch Man. As voted upon by an esteemed panel of judges made up of me, the Golden Saber for Anime of the Year 2015 goes to... Yes, Shirobako. It's already taken home quite a bit of hardware in this awards show, winning Best of Winter, Best Cast, and Best Slice of Life, but it really is deserving. Shirobako has so much to offer beyond just its intriguing behind-the-scenes look into the industry. There's a fantastic story here about never giving up on your dreams and the struggles of adulthood. It isn't the walk in the park some series make it out to be. However, it's all about perseverance, having the strength to keep moving forward even during the difficult times. Shirobako is a phenomenal character story, an absolute must-watch, and without a doubt, my anime of the year. And that'll do it for me. For the record, here's what my top five shows of the year would look like with and without Fall 2014 leftovers. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to all of my subscribers. A few months ago, I never would have thought it possible that we'd hit 1,000 by the end of the year, but you guys made it happen. Thank you so, so much, and I hope to continue giving you the content you enjoy. Here's to making it another great year.